It may seem to some people that the, uh, the football season has gone on forever, and of course it has. But next week it really does end, for a couple of days, with the cup final at Wembley. Now for most football teams the, the season ends tomorrow with their last games. And for a handful of London clubs, uh, Charlton, Orient, Crystal Palace and Millwall, this last match is crucial. They've got to win tomorrow or they face relegation. Millwall, for example, faces going down to the fourth division. That's the Siberia of soccer. But the fans won't desert them and Danny Baker is the man to tell us why. He's a Millwall supporter himself and he was there for their relegation tussle with Brentford last Sunday. Danny is in the dark shorts. Millwall Football Club aren't down in the fourth division yet, but they're not far off. The players note the day's game is crucial and so do the fans. They can remember when Millwall used to be in the fourth division and they don't want to go back there. Fourth division, well, we've been there before and we got out of it and we kept going. Been plenty of time. But we won't go down, no way are Millwall going to go down, no way. We're going to beat this mob today, slaughter them. Loyal to the last, they're determined that their team shouldn't go down this year to the dreaded fourth. Though past history doesn't offer much hope. I mean, this is really unusual, Millwall facing relegation, it's isn't it? It's in your blood, it's in your blood. How many times have Millwall won the cup? Get out of mustard square. <laughs> what <laughs> cup, what cup? How many times have Millwall been in the first division? Never. Never. Of course, Millwall's trophies don't take up a lot of shelf space. They've never actually been up there with the Spurs or the Arsenals. Right now, the players and manager George Graham will be happy just to stay in the third division and avoid relegation. I've never been in the fourth division and I'm not going to go. No. I'm not going to get in the fourth division. Never been there. Don't so, want to go there. And it's the next 90 minutes that are going to count for Millwall. They have to beat Brentford today to have a fighting chance of staying out of the clutches of the fall. When your future's in the balance, there's no type of subtlety. But then, you can't expect a match to be a Vickers tea party when there's so much at stake. Millwall's style may not be very gripping, but at least if you do get bored, you can always have a sing-song. If you can remember the words, that is. <laughs> when the chips are down, supporters will come from the ends of the earth just to cheer them on. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, sh 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 I've come out 100 miles to see me all at home. You've come 100 miles? Where from? Huntington. Excuse me, where have you come from? Austria, we're here now. Austria? Yeah, yeah we're here now. you come up to Washington, where's that from? From Australia, Melbourne. You've come, you seriously have come from Melbourne, Australia? Yeah. Said me old woman, oh, I'll let her go home. So she said, go on it, and that was it. She come home, booked a ticket Wednesday left on Thursday morning. In fact, Millwall fans are known for a little too much devotion to their team. So on occasions like this, when feelings run high, the most enthusiastic supporters are kept behind bars, just in case they get a little bit out of hand. And it's not just the visiting fans who need protection. You'd think the players sometimes need it too, from overexcited managers and trainers. But a little encouragement seems to pay off. One nil to Millwall and that's how the game ended. The lads are heroes. All they've got to do now is win one more match and they'll be safe. But not perhaps from the congratulations of their fans. Or the manager, who's not as happy with them as the supporters. But at least they won. And that's what counts. Yeah, but we've got the positive. One of you have got to say, I'm going to the positive one. <laughs> so there it is, we stuffed them. I mean, I've got no voice left, my nails are all bitten down, and for anyone still confused out there, that's the beauty of supporting a team like Millwall. I mean, it was fantastic, wasn't it? I mean, you must have wished you could have been here. <laughs> Very serious stuff, Danny. How many people were there, in fact? There were over 9,000 oh. people there. Is the that biggest good? Crowd two, biggest crowd for two years, that is. I must say, he was a bit rough with his supporter there. With a supporter? Cool, that supporter got hold of him. You should have seen that. <laughs> what a mobile down there. I've been going since I was five years old. And before I did this job, I was in the music business and I interviewed all the top rock bands. I've spoke to a load of famous people in this. But when I went to Millwall's dressing room, I met all these geezers about this big and five years younger than me. I was like, yeah, really, 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 really. I couldn't, I couldn't even think of anything to say to them. Nothing. Which... I remember when I was 11, I went down there. And it's the first time I've been in the seats, the stands, they call it, but it's the seats since I was 11. And when I was 11, Mill was losing 1 0 to Luton, half time. My dad always bought me a pie and a tea. And I threw the tea away because I felt, <laughs> I threw the tea away because I felt sick. And through the pipe when he asked me, Dad wouldn't see it. And we, there's a little roof. And the first time since I was 11, I went down there, above that little roof, and I looked down, 
I probably won't now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would end like that. Desperate, isn't it? I mean, I've supported Fulham for years and years, but it hasn't done me quite the same amount of damage.